You see this? I'm about to make the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. No, 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 not one of those mistakes. I'm about to ruin one of the few prototype keyboards of a billion dollar company. I'm never doing this again. This was a horrible idea. Ah! And you're probably wondering how I got here. Well, howdy hey, I'm Hippio Tech and I try keyboards so you don't have to. And Razer challenged me to upgrade their brand new keyboard by sending me an exclusive prototype. Now, I'm also notorious for filling keyboards with weird things like kinetic sand and Play-Doh and uh, that's how we got here. Oh, but there's just one other thing. I have to have this keyboard displayed in public for other people to try it. I told them this thing would be good. And I have three days to fix this with kinetic sand again. Okay, redemption arc. But along the way, I'll also be trying Razer's newest keyboard, the Black Widow V4 75% Pro, and giving some of my thoughts on it. And boy, do I have some thoughts. Now, before I get absolutely unhinged and put sand in this thing, which trust me, you're gonna wanna see that. First, we need to determine two things. Number one, is this even a decent keyboard? Like, why did Razer send me their new prototype? And number two, can I fill it with sand? Let's get unboxed. Now, I'll get to the weird metal balls that are all over my room still to this day, and the sand, but this video is sponsored by Razer, who did not review this video, and all of my thoughts are my own. Now, because this is a prototype, I don't have an unboxing, but it's probably pretty similar to the other Black Widow V4 75%. Like, we've got this plush, squishy wrist rest with a plastic bottom and some rubber feet. Um, this is new. We've got a very chonky, chonky dongle. We'll talk about that later. And, uh, like the keyboard with the plastic bottom still. What? Now, one year ago, I checked out Razer's baby brother of this keyboard, and I definitely had some thoughts. And we'll be touching base with those thoughts throughout this video to see what they listened to and what they completely ignored. And yes, that is a screen on the corner, and we'll be looking at it later. Now, similar to its younger brother, it's a 75% keyboard from Razer. It's got F keys, it's got arrow keys, it's a keyboard, so that's good, I guess. But the biggest question that I have is why does it have Pro in its name? Like, are they using Hall Effect switches? Is this gonna magically make me better at gaming? Is it just because it's wireless? Bruh. We'll find out soon. Now, you might have noticed that I haven't mentioned the price yet, and that's because this thing is $299. I don't know about you guys, but that raises a lot of questions for me. Like, um, what the hell are you thinking? Now, I don't know if you're new to keyboards or not, but in the last couple years, literally everything has changed. So for $300, this thing is gonna have to buy me dinner, make me better at gaming, and do a lot of other things to make it three times the value of a bunch of other potentially better keyboards. Also, editor Hippio note, I filmed this whole entire video before the Wooting ADHE was released, but um, that's actually $10 cheaper than this keyboard, and I was trashing on that for being too expensive. So what the hell, Razer? Like what makes this thing so much more expensive? Is it this hyper pulling wireless dongle? which gives you 4,000 hertz pulling over wireless, because that is a really cool feature, making it one of the fastest wireless boards on the market, but it's also an incredibly niche feature. And to be totally honest with you, I just don't notice the difference for anything above 1,000 hertz pulling, and I'm not sure that you will either. But that's fine. What else have they changed? Well, maybe it's actually easier to start with what they didn't change on this keyboard from the other Razer Black Widow V4 75%. Yeah, that was a mouthful. Well, first, the chassis in and of itself is mostly the same. Bruh. The knob has changed to the side, which is really nice. You've still got the same really thin aluminum top plate. I'm not sure if the switches are the same yet, but we'll check that out in just a second. But as I mentioned before, this thing does have wireless with tri-mode capabilities, meaning you can use it Bluetooth, 2.4 gigahertz, and wired. And at this point, I was starting to get really confused and wonder why this thing could be called Pro. Like with the first keyboard, Razer made some really good steps in the right direction. Direction. But with this one, they didn't change much. Why Why is this happening like this? Why is it this the way that it is? Now, on the previous version, I roasted them on this because I was like, guys, your keyboard isn't even wireless. Why are you using a plastic case? So, um, the plastic probably improves the wireless performance, but I don't think that's the reason they kept it. Now you're probably wondering, Hippio, why are you talking about the build quality? Why are you talking about this? Well, remember how Razer challenged me to upgrade this keyboard? All of these things are gonna change how I upgrade it later. And because the case is plastic, I think I'm gonna have to add some metal to it. Now, I can't say I've ever seen a pro gamer using a wrist rest, but there is a wrist rest included with this keyboard that does feel relatively plush and pretty nice. The knob is also really incredibly tactile and feels absolutely great to use. That is what she said, by the way, definitely what she said. And the switches for this version of this keyboard are, um, the same? 
they're the, they're the same. Now, at first I was like, oh yeah, these switches are really great and tactile and smooth and sounded nice out of the box. But then I dug a little bit deeper and saw that tons and tons of people were having issues with these orange switches just after a month or two of buying this keyboard. Issues that resolved when they swapped them out for Mirandi switches, for example. Now I asked Razer about this and they said that it was just with one batch of these switches and that it's been fixed, which could totally be true, but I can't help but wonder if that might happen again. But my expectations for a pro version of this keyboard were maybe upgraded switches and maybe even a linear option. So when I upgrade this board later, I'm gonna have to switch these out. Now, as far as the keycaps go, I do have to give Razer some credit here as they are pretty decent double shot PBT keycaps. The texturing is really nice on them. They shine through, so they look tacky and gamery, but that's my subjective opinion and a lot of people like them. Now, as far as the stabilizers go, they have factory lubed them with Crytox 205 grade zero, which just like the first version, they're pretty decent. Although I'm only gauging that off the last version as my prototype weren't factory lubed and they did tell me this was an anomaly. And back on the topic of switches, in the last year, Hall Effect has taken over literally every gaming keyboard, and these are standard mechanical switches. With SnapTap starting to get banned in games, Hall Effect doesn't have a direct massive advantage over other keyboards, and it really only gives you a specific advantage in a couple of games, and arguably Hall Effect feels worse, sounds worse, and is just in need of a desperate overhaul of its technology. I'll uh, make a full video on that later this year. But the general gamer sentiment is that Hall Effect is the best, and when gamers think something is the best, you kind of have to give that to them. There's sadly no room for nuance with a lot of gamers. But I do think it's absolutely laughable to make a pro gaming keyboard, a keyboard that pros use and not make it Hall Effect, as Hall Effect is really only the best use case for pros. Like in my Wooting ADHE video, I literally say that Hall Effect doesn't matter for most gamers. And I still think that's true because the performance increase is five to 10%. It won't make you a better gamer compared to just practice or coaching. But for pros, we're talking about pros here, it's in the name. I feel like that's a bit of a missed opportunity for Razer to come in, innovate on Hall Effect and finally make a good Hall Effect switch. The great thing about this keyboard is Razer has put a focus on some customizability. Like this board does have hot swap sockets with them um, north facing. LEDs, dang it. North facing LEDs. You know what, at this point, I'm just going under my desk. I'm just gonna sit here and cry, all right? You guys can ask me about why later. I'm gonna cry under here, it's fine. I give up. But this customizability does mean that you can replace any switch really easy and potentially even take the keyboard apart pretty easy. But what about the brand new screen and the software? And yeah, I was playing Minecraft in the background, deal with it. Well, one thing I will never fault Razer for is their RGB, which is incredibly bright, incredibly vibrant, and makes this keyboard look incredibly gamery. I am one of the like five people that doesn't hate Razer Synapse because as a gamer, I do like the fact that it connects to different games and is relatively easy to use through some of the bugs. One bummer of this being a prototype is I had to use prototype software, but this black and white OLED screen is pretty cool when you can customize it with your own GIFs like this random spaceship GIF. And it does serve some fun features like showing your GPU and CPU temperatures and random audio visualization. However, a screen isn't exactly that fancy of a feature as I've seen it on boards as cheap as 50 US dollars. Now, before I get to customizing this entire keyboard and ruining a prototype for a multi-billion dollar company, you're probably wondering how it sounds stock. So I'll be giving you a quick little teaser sound test. Now, if you've only ever tried gaming keyboards before, you're probably gonna be like, wow, that sounds so good. That's incredible, that's amazing. However, when you take into account that there's many, many other keyboards that cost up to $200 cheaper that sound and feel better, we're gonna need to mod this thing. Oh, yeah. Um, excuse me, quick question. How is this pro? Like, who is this pro? Where is the pro? Are you the pro? Am I the pro? What makes this pro? I mean, the RGB is really nice. Is it something on the inside? Is it the wireless latency that other keyboards basically have? I'm a little bit confused here. Is it just the 2024 trend to put a screen on something, call it pro and charge a lot more money? Because I'm not here for that. I am here for something, but it's not that. Let's put sand in it. Let's let's put sand in it. Now you're probably wondering why is real life Hippio very grumpy? Well, my first impressions of this thing were like, it's not much better than the version that's 130 bucks cheaper, which was already arguably a bit overpriced. But, oh, they've got quite a bit of foam here. And yes, they even put a tape mod on this keyboard. Now, the disassembly of this thing was relatively easy. However, because it was a prototype, I quickly ran into an issue. The screw is stripped. Wow, 
He's freaking naked, he's so stripped, bro. Now, this was incredibly worrying. Like, I have to upgrade this keyboard for Razer, and I can't even take apart their own keyboard. And yes, I did try things like a flathead screwdriver and the rubber band trick and all of that, and it didn't work. Now, what I did have access to was this plastic case, which I was originally just gonna fill with kinetic sand, which is an amazingly fun thing and not just regular sand. I've used this a lot in the past, and it's actually notorious for making keyboards sound incredible. But then I was like, what if I add metal to it, you know? Meet the antagonist of this whole entire video metal ball bearings. Now I saw a video of Keyboard aka Scott doing a silicone pour and then filling that silicone with these metal ball bearings and it did a couple of amazing things. Number one, it made the keyboard heavier. Number two, it made everything denser and number three, it made it sound absolutely incredible. So then I thought, well, what if I put these in the keyboard and then just cover that with sand? It's a perfect plan. I get a bunch of added weight to this case. It's gonna sound incredible. Everyone's gonna love it. I mean, literally nothing could go wrong here, right? Like the sand is gonna sit on top of this and everything's gonna be okay. Now I did this really inefficiently and this was like 30 or $40 worth of metal ball bearings, but I was like, whatever, I'm committed to the bit. This is gonna be awesome. As I added each handful of kinetic sand, my worries faded away as I thought this was gonna be the thawkiest keyboard that I've ever made. And I'm fixing this Razer keyboard for them. The New York Times is gonna write an article about how I made the best keyboard mod in the world by copying keyboard. And um, my first barrier was getting this thing closed was pretty hard. So I had to flip over the keyboard to screw everything in. And why are there balls falling out? Oh no. There's um now balls all over my desk. Don't take that out of context. There are balls all over my desk. This was a horrible idea. Never do this. <laughs> Now, at first I was like, oh, it's just a little bit messy. I've got balls on my desk. That's no big deal. I've done that before. But what I didn't realize is that they were already at work, moving into every little piece and crevice of this keyboard. Uh. Oh my God. This was my worst video idea ever. I'm never doing this again. The amount of balls that I'm still getting out of this thing. Terrible idea. Metal balls. 10 out of 10. Metal balls not suspended in something? Zero out of 10. Do not engage with metal balls. Oh, yeah. So just a few problems. Number one, that was the last of my sand. So I'm gonna have to order some more. While we're doing that, let's talk about the keycaps and the switches. Because the Razer keycaps, definitely not my favorite thing. I absolutely hate gamer keycaps. They're like literally my least favorite thing in the world. They make the keyboard sound really chattery and kind of gross and I do not like that. It's not very cutesy. So, there's also a problem. This board has north facing LEDs. So, I can't just smack cherry profile keycaps and any good thawky switch on here. We're gonna need to get creative. Now, changing out your keycaps and switches on this board is super easy. You pull all the keycaps off with the tool and then you take a gander at your switches and you think about what you've done with your life. As the existential dread sinks in, you start to pull out each individual switch and you realize it was actually really easy all along. Then I tried a couple of different switch ideas to see what would make this keyboard sound and feel the best. Some linear switches that were really well factory lubed from HMX, which were all right, they were acceptable, I guess. And some Mirandi switches, which have literally never failed me, link down below. Because the Razer switches prioritize RGB, they've got that top housing that just kind of leaves this board sounding a little bit thin, in my opinion. So I think these Mirandis might bring back some of that deeper sound profile and make this keyboard sound and feel like a more pro keyboard. On top of that, I also wanted to run a side-by-side -side with the original version that I used Mirandi switches on. Now, one thing I unfortunately didn't have was the same keycaps that I used on the original Black Widow. So I resorted to the next best thing, which is what I envision Razer would put on a keyboard if they actually made it for enthusiasts. Like these are just some really nice looking die sub PBT keycaps from Canon Keys that I got on sale. And overall, I think it gives this board just a little bit more of a premium feel. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys can roast me in the comments and be like, wow, Hippio, this is not pro whatsoever. Um, or maybe you'll just leave a comment with your favorite ice cream flavor because, uh, okay. I think I've learned my lesson. We got more sand. This one smells like chocolate. Let me first start by taping up some of these gaps. Not gonna make the same mistake twice. Now, as I mentioned in the intro of this video, Razer's gonna be displaying this keyboard at their launch event in New York for people to try, and it's gonna have my name on it. And I thought, oh, Hippio, just fill it with balls. That's gonna be so funny, balls, hee hee. And I have three days to send it to them, which is really not a lot of time. I was starting to freak out. So it was time for my modding redemption arc. It involved three different scents of kinetic sand. Now, unfortunately, I will never get all of the balls out of this keyboard. They are stuck in there permanently, and they have led to some issues. And yes, I did do this before I picked out the switches and the keycaps. Hee hee, I got you. Now, I wanted to do a lot more mods with this thing, but because of the strip screw, 
through and all of the ball bearings throughout this whole entire thing, I just kind of felt stuck. But with changing the keycaps and switches, it's basically a mod that anyone can do really easily to this keyboard, and it does improve it quite a bit. The sand mod, I don't necessarily recommend trying at home, but that ultimately leaves me still scratching my head because this thing is the best keyboard that Razer has ever made, I'll say that again, but unfortunately, because they didn't listen to content creators like me, and didn't improve their case quality, their gasket performance, or any other things to make this more premium, it kind of just leaves me confused. Like, this keyboard might have good wireless performance, but that's really the only thing it has up on any of the competition. If you're a hardcore gamer, then you're gonna want Hall Effect switches. If you're someone that games casually, then you're gonna want a more premium, full aluminum, thocky, creamy something or rather. I think my conclusion is that this thing should have been what the other Black Widow V4 was. And it should be the same price as that and just replace it entirely. I think Razer made a fine keyboard, but I can't see why anyone would buy it.